Let us start the learning now. I'll pass on the mic to our moderator right now. So, good afternoon. Good afternoon, all the executives of OIC and also honorable guests online and also on site. Those who join us by the uh, online site and also it is an honor for me to be here today and also our guest of honor. Actually, we are the middlemen in this business and supply chain. Like for example, for the general insurance, we introduced more than 50% of total business. Now it's actually 55% of the total insurance market. And of course, life insurance account for 10-ish percent. For this topic, a success story and how brokers survive in the digital world is our topic for the day. I'm honored to have my guests here, our special speakers that we have. Actually, this is the market leader, the EQM and also ANC and Dr. Vira, who's been the leading developer of this technology. He served so many listed companies in the industry. So today we're going to hear about a lot of interesting ideas. So may I start now? Let me give you the background, short background of our panelists. So now we have Dr. Vira Virakun, who is the CEO of the Free Will Solutions. His background is in engineering. So he had all his degrees, the bachelor, master, and PhD in engineering. He is a veteran in platform development and also data analytics as well as software developers for the middlemen in and the middle stream in the supply chain for the insurance and as well as other businesses. So of course we will learn a lot from him. Thank you for coming today. So next we have Kuntuk here. She is also a doctor, Dr. Napasanan Panipa, and she is the CEO of TQM Insurance Broker. So of course you know that this is a leading brokerage company. Now it's changed to Alpha, and that is Generation Alpha for the future, right? You'll hear more from her about the details on how TQM has become Alpha. Another tech veteran, Kun Supakit or Kun Bell. So his full name is Supakit Supa Banapong, and he is the managing director of the ANC Brokerage Company Limited. So he's the software developer, especially for brokerage and insurance companies. We are honored to have all the panelists here with us. Thank you very much for your time. So first of all, as you be maybe well aware already, we are always hearing and talking about disruption of digital era, whether it is the insurance business or daily life. But after COVID, in the post-COVID era, of course, it has been the accelerator of everything. It shifts the consumer behavior significantly in this VUCA world, the world that is vulnerable and uncertain. So in this VUCA world, with the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, of course, these are the factors that rush us into changes, not only in insurance industry, but also other businesses. So let me give the first questions to our panelists today. In this VUCA world, what would be the key for the brokerage business to change from now on? So let me ask Kun Tuk first. Um, for me, in this VUCA world, which of course you will be familiar with that term by now, especially after we all passed the COVID era with all the certainties that it brought about. 
So for TQM, just like you said before, that now we have shift to become alpha. So with this change, actually for the brokerage company by nature, we cannot survive by brokerage business line alone. For TQM, we are a listed company. After listing, we learned a broader world about a broader world, and it broadened our world a lot. We learned from the new team joining in, and we now realize that insurance uh, brokerage would not be enough. So we can enter into the new venture to go direct to the consumers, and it's not going to be just about the distribution, but also the back office services and operations, especially the technological development. So that goes way beyond being brokerage company now. And we have to unlock ourselves. And just like, you know, I said that when we talk about brokerage, I think that is not enough for survival. So I want you guys to jump across the border. And for me, I always say that today, you know, we are the in the business for 69 years. This is the third generation. And my children, they would be the fourth generation. And we last for 70 years. Of course, we need to adapt all the time. If we stay originally to our nature on day one, with the same journey like 20 or 25 years ago, it's not going to work. We started telemarketing 25 years ago, but we will be extinct by now if we continue with telemarketing. So of course, we need to change, to adapt, to unlock, to be more than just the brokerage or broker. So we need to go for the relevant businesses. And of course, we list as a holding company. So now we have more members of the board of directors who have witnessed changes in the, in the insurance industry. After the digital disruption, everything changed. If we are afraid to encounter it, and to try to live with it and embrace it. We have to do that to survive. And it changed our mindset, not to be just in the brokerage business, but to venture into the nearby sea so that we can strengthen our business. And that would be the background for the next question that I would answer. Oh, okay, that is good answer. And you said that uh, you talk about the related services. What are they actually? And Kuntuk said that, well, at TQM, now we have 5,000 staff in our group who are the permanent staff. And it uh, the number excludes the dealers or the brokers. So 60% of the work would be the front office work. And we have about two or 3,000 people working on providing services. So if you ask me, you know, we also work together in the association, right? So the work in association would reflect on how we need to synergize to survive. You cannot just grow alone or thrive alone. That's not gonna be a good choice. and. Everywhere I go when I get to speak, like uh, when I talk to Kun Bell or when I work with uh, our moderator here. So we have to share to grow together. And uh, the moderator said that is good. And we always share the resource and the information. Now let's ask Kun Bell the same question. And Kun Bell said that for me, to go in this business, we are now in the 18 year of business. So uh, in this VUCA world, of course, we talk about disruption. And we started off with the concept that if we want to survive online, 
It has been our goal since day one, and we now have clear direction. After we saw how COVID hit and impact the changes in the business, all the sales process has been disrupted. But we were lucky that we already got this platform up and running. In this worker world, things change rapidly and it can be overnight. So what's most important is now we learn more about the technology and platform. This has presented to us the opportunity because technology would help many, if not all, to expand the market in overnight. You can do that because this is a trend. You know, you may not know about the future, but if you are ready, you can catch on the right of the new wave once it has become a trend. So for the insurance platform, actually it start off with the mosquito insurance. Well, we have the micro insurance, that's what we call it. And for, the, for this, OIC already supported this area. And that is how we adapt from the platform that already exists to serve the customers in a broader area. So for the sales or the after sales service, for broker, we cannot just sell and that's it. We have to also provide the after sales service. When we have overwhelming numbers of the customers, you need a platform to help you to work effectively. And by the brokerage, of course, you have to design something that you can serve Main multiple customer at once. So today's world, we have so many new way of works. It's more convenient and people love convenience because insurance is a hard concept already for a consum consumer to understand. Even people in the industry got confused with the new notification and rules and regulations too. So we need everything to be simplified but with the right principle. You may need something for them like documents or literature for them to read after that, afterward. But you need to simplify things. This is very important in the WUGA world. And technology is essential to help you do that, to help you get ready. And the moderator said that, of course, you need to be ready and you need the technological readiness especially so that you can provide service not only for the distribution part and that would bring you the service excellence. So when we talk about digital, we also think of it as the threats. So for brokers, it's not only about the technology helping us on the distribution from uh, changing from the telemarketing to the platform, but also technology can help with the service part. If you can offer products that are simple enough and you can sell the, pa the right package, maybe if it's too simple, then the technology may steal the jobs from us, isn't it? So some would think like that because now the commission will be cheaper, everything will be more simple and anyone can do it. So let's hear from an outsider, Mr. Vira, Dr. Vira, to see what he thinks. And uh, Dr. Vira said that as a consumer, I would have to say that those who can build the relationship and the best uh, that offer something that best responds to the need of the customers can be anyone, whether it's going to be broker or any regular job. So for brokers, I think that you guys have more chance to uh, more chance to engage, right? So one thing that Kuntuk said that is important, and I want to emphasize it again, that at Alpha TQM, actually they learn about themselves first they choose the right technology for themselves. This is important because whether it is in the industri uh, insurance industry or other industries, sometimes you just jump and grab the technology in front of you, although you don't know if it fits you or not. And 99% out of 100% will be a waste of money. 
So this is what I learned so far, and you know, I come from the tech world, and I always want to sell things and solutions. But if you don't know what to do with it, then it's a waste of time, money, and resources, and I don't want to see that. So, if brokers would like to thrive in this world, this digital world, you need to have the insight of your customers, what they want, and how can you spin off from what you have as the relationship. Because digital world disrupts everyone. Everyone is so, you know, rushed into things. They want everything and they want it now. Even now would be too slow. So if you cannot answer to that kind of rush, then how can you use technology to help? Because digital is good, but there are three steps. If I ask you, would you know what it is? Step one, digitize. If you still do things manually or buy papers, hard copies, if you don't have any digital data, then you cannot get done with the step one. After you digitize everything, step two would be digitalization. That is the process from the dig digital data that you have. You see how you can streamline your process. And after a while, you go to digital transformation. And that is the business transformation, just like what TQM Alpha is working on. So I want everyone to understand this principle first, not just go shopping for technology that you don't understand. And next, I would like to talk about the discrepancy or the inequality in the technology access. Of course, for big companies, money is never a problem, but for smaller ones, you know, when you want to invest, access is actually hard to find. But nowadays, you can just find the solutions that would share the risks with you. It's gonna be like a high purchase or the profit sharing model. So think about this. It will help you to lower the barrier that you might have so think about this as another option. If you own a database, then of course the insurance company would want to work with you. But you also need to think about this too. It's, for example, health insurance. There would be certain customers that have so many options and they would have to spend hours at a hospital when they have to go uh, to visit doctor. You know, they may spend like one hour for a doctor consultation, but the rest of the time will be messed up with the payment and what type of insurance that they will use. So you have to figure it out how to simplify this and then you find the right technology for it. You can come to me or others, any solution providers, or you can develop your own like Kun Bell, but you have to start at the right point. <laughs> And the moderator asked Kuntuk what she thinks. And uh, Kuntuk said that actually he speaks her mind. You know, eight years ago, I, um, I have to say for TQM, we've been in telemarketing for 25, 25 years. And uh, for the turning point to go digital is that I, you know, I, uh, I've been transformed from face to face to telemarketing and I've been sitting patiently to see what is the turning point for another disruption. And I believe that if smartphone costs only 5,000 then we will go digital right away. But that was my only idea, only thing that I can came up, I can came up with. But eight years ago, I see banks closing down branches and we actually had a plan to open up 500 stores on our own. We already got a budget and we will invest 200 million baht for the um, branch uh, expansion, but we saw banks and we have to stop and think. And now we start to see how Samsung Hero or the cheap phone start to vanish from the market while smartphone began to be sold at 5,000. And so we have to redo, uh, redesign our plan to have the platform developed 
and also to uh, for use of the brokers, for use of the staff. And actually, we use this 200 million baht to learn about what we didn't know before and what is usable in the end end up with only 20 or 30 million baht worth. The rest 170 baht is like a tuition fee to learn what we did not know. And Dr. Vera said that actually you can save all the money if you knew yourself first. And Kutuk said that actually the turning point is after COVID, everyone had to work from home, right? So the 200 million baht that I got scolded by the company's board day in and day out that we still have not got any great returns or readiness whether you have the right processes or everything will run through correctly or properly whether our staff is ready just like the uh, general secretary said uh, secretary general said that we need to be ready so we already spent 200 million baht already but after covid hit people had to work from home and tqm was actually one of the first clusters for covid infection because we were together very closely the whole floor actually and we have the separate security for uh, all the floor to stick into their own zone so we can uh, we could survive for a certain while but and we have about uh, 200 people in each floor and one floor got infected by 150 staff so um, we were lucky enough to send everyone to uh, be hospitalized and then we seal the office. With that, if we don't have the online platform, then our business will be in big trouble. And that is where the 200 million baht worth the pay. So after that, after a couple of years of COVID, now we saw that, you know, and I second what you said totally that if you build your own platform you know with our budget we use it for technology investment not less than 100 million baht every year and you know if we get the sharing the profit sharing model that would be great because now we have the alpha team and also finance and technological platform we just uh, did m and a bill of bill and one of the ceos actually is the first president of startup association of thailand too so anything that we can share and uh, our tech ceo is actually the mentor of many startups new startup companies so if we can share any resources because we already did that with others. So for the Intratech, it will be the same. We already have certain developments on the Intratech. And this is not uh, selling our resources, but I want to share with you guys that it's really expensive. And a lot of things that we have been doing after we learned with the 200 million baht, we start to learn something. But if you start from zero, it's going to cost you a lot. So you can go anywhere, but I think that we have to synergize to thrive because these boys are like golden boys, golden people. You know, they are too expensive for one company to hire. So if you are a small company and if we can leverage from the, the shared resource, that would be great. That would bring about the progress for all parties. So the moderator said that we need to find the right resource to survive in this. Now let's talk to Kun Bell about the software and platform and what's happening at ANC. So Kun Bell said that just like Dr. Vira said, now that if you have a, a large database, I think that insight is even more important of this large database you know no matter how many leads you may have it's not as important as how many leads that you can convert and you can retain afterwards and technology can help with that so now we have the platform my policy that uh, we have the oic gateway and oic connect that 
has been recently developed, it is very beneficial, and it can be even greater if it can be used and applied to plug in to your other platforms. And I believe that you got the technology, you know, the best startup and also the best brokerage companies would have this kind of technology because customer nowadays, they want everything now. And, you know, just like uh, the experience that I heard from customers that everything is a waste of time, the payout journey and also the claim journey as well as the other processes. So, you know, we have the existing technologies to help with this. We have pioneers in this, so it depends on who can share because we have been wasting our time quite a lot already. For ANC ourselves, now we have the Prakan.com or insurance.com platform where the customer can buy the insurance package online. Of course, there are things that we can share and th these will be tools that help the customer feel that insurance is important enough for them to incorporate in daily life. And you know, as a broker, you have to share the platform and also to connect to the platform so that the customer would feel that they can use the platform to contact or reach out to us. Because sometimes customers do not bother to remember the name or the face of those who they buy from. So if the platform is well designed, I believe that the broker can become the point of contact for further convenience for the customers in the future world. And the moderator said that, Kun Bell said that uh, the platform has to be modern, but actually now we are talking about the new generations uh, younger than 25 years of age that we call them alpha gen. So how can we access those who has been uh, dwelled uh, in the digital world since they are not um, born. You know, we are Gen Y, although not baby boomer, but still we see a lot of changes, right? For our team members, the younger colleagues. So how can we serve the next generation well? And Dr. Vira said, I really don't understand about this generation actually, but with COVID, actually, we are all impacted in terms of risks, in terms of the uncertainty that becomes something that it is so certain. You can expect anything to happen at any time now. So now we are living with this mindset and for the risk management, uh, we'll see that it's more essential to have. So it's going to be beneficial to the insurance business. But what's difficult is how can you synergize the whole industry to customize the type of risk appetite and design the package or the policy that fit in. You know, we have been talking about precision medicine in the medical industry for the tailor-made formula or medicine for each person. And I think that insurance can do it faster and better too. But one weakness, you know, we now have the insurance bureau that was a plus, but the weakness is, you know, all stakeholders need to understand that we have to synergize and OIC would have to be the gatekeeper or the, uh, rule, the rule keeper for this. So if we can do this, then we can save a lot of loss from the unreadiness of all parties. But brokerage and also insurance industry will remain intact. So now we have the NIB, which is the first step that is good, but we also have to move on to the next step with the database. Now, if you are big companies, you have to sacrifice to share your resource. And I say this as a consumer, because as we heard from the Secretary General, now we know about the insights. Now you have the database. And I always know that the net worth, what is my net worth? And also you can have my real-time worth 
uh, that is in finance. So I know that Gen Alpha would want that in the industry of insurance. And to achieve that, all the platform has to be connected to be open and shared so that everyone can share the real time basis data. And also, the key keeper or the gatekeeper could be OIC. But if we do that, now we have PDPA um, Act, we have Computer Act, so these are the laws and regulations that we have to pay attention to. And the moderator said, actually, it's good for the um, sharing of information, like with the insurance bureau system that we have, it can minimize fraud cases and also for the insurance or the insured person, if we got into accidents or if we are sick, if we want to know the details of uh, our policy, like if I got in a car accident, I will not know whether what I can claim as a motor insurance or if I have health insurance or I have the insurance that would be provided by my company. So with this database, everyone can access and then everyone can get ready or to have readiness in terms of how to take care of themselves. And also, all the Thai people would understand from cradle to death what they will get as their rights and benefits that they can claim. Now, let's ask, let's ask Kun Tuk the same question. Well, Kun Tuk said that, like I said before, actually, PDPA is very important because we want to earn trust from the consumers, of course. So I agree with this policy totally. And just like I said before, that digital, you know, you cannot stop the changes in this world. So you cannot get stuck with the old things that you have. For PDPA, of course, is kind of an obstacle on the data sharing. But if you can gain trust from the ger uh, public general, then you can fast forward yourself to where you want to go. So for TQM ourselves, like I said earlier, that we work for companies in Alpha, but now we have 14. And for some, you know, they serve the direct business of TQM, but we can see clearly, like for certain technology, we would like to share with the rest of the companies or for the uh, brokerage uh, platform, we will have a separate platform for that. And we just launched Friday, which belongs to TQD. That is for agent to use and for for some, we will have the uh, life insurance brokers, which we provide the knowledge and products on the platform. So if you are interested, you can approach us at TQM Alpha. Let me sell myself a little bit. And also you can go to Free Will or ANC for the products too. We are willing to share like, um, Actually, for some platform or some tools, we use it uh, as a shared resource with our startups. And also, we have invested in dozens of companies that did not belong to Alpha Group, but we use certain technology from them because we are not expert, experts in all technologies. So, you know, we use 30 million baht, they use 3 million baht. Why not just use that technology? It's a lot easier. So you can approach Alpha and uh, also we have the mentor to help you too if you are interested and so we can try it together. So uh, can I ask you, doctor, uh, as the previous solutions developed the system for the OIC when you compare with other systems available in the industry and as you are one of the committee members I believe that you can provide a very good examples for us. Uh, can you help us compare some of the systems uh, as the system developer? 
Oh, uh, when you ask me about that, I could say that uh, they have different starting point. You know, the SEC, the stock market, has much more developed because it started for like 30 years ago. And their data are real time in the business. Data is real time. You know, when you try to trade, right? When you tap and you, the signal doesn't go, people will complain. So the, the way we develop is quite different. And when we work with the insurance, wow, it's a big different, different world, different readiness, different adoption and different level of investment. So comparing with the stock market, the stock market is easier to deal with because everybody has the willingness to do so. But for the insurance, there are some big players who can make a lot of progresses. They are moving much faster, but Thai people, Thai company doesn't have a lot of money. So we understand that it's not easy. The readiness is very, there's a lot of variables and it's not very easy how to maintain their competitiveness. This is one of the biggest challenge for OIC. From technological point of view, we need to look for a way to I would say offer options. So let's say you cannot throw in 20 million baht for a system. Maybe you can pay more for more project or pay less for lesser projects, right? So there are many chances that we can still, I mean, we can do that. So my view is quite different because you are a very big company. For me, I have a different view. Actually, yes, you, are, you also outsource. Yeah, I agree. Because I cannot do everything by myself. We cannot just throw 30 million baht into one project. We have to outsource quite a lot of projects, like 3 million baht each, for example. Not everything at the same time. Yeah, can you see that? Sometimes we have to outsource the development by hiring other people. You, you can save a lot of time. If you have 200 million baht in your pocket, lying around, you can do that, throwing everything to save time. And that time allows you to gain more customer rather than spending time to develop everything in-house you'd rather spend your time somewhere else so i would like to say that the technology is much more advanced and thai companies are very good i can say that many people here they have a lot of potentials technological speaking but sometimes you just don't understand the context of the business so our job is that okay we have this we want to do that can you help me with this don't just say that, oh, I want blockchain. You cannot just say that. I can do that. I don't know if you can use it. I can build you a blockchain. But the point is, I don't know if it's practical. Oh, I'm sorry to cut in, but we are running out of time, sir. Actually, we should have another session for you, Dr. Vira. Maybe we would love to know more. But maybe just one final word from our panelists. So, uh, in order to make our brokerage business more sustainable, what can we do, sir? Oh, uh, maybe I just say thank you because that's already half a minute. Okay, so speaking of sustainability, it starts with quality. Anyhow, as a broker, the quality and honesty, quality and honesty both are very important. But we can use technology to help improving our work. We can make it more convenient, right? And just one more thing. Technology relates to data, and there are two things we can do with data. First, sorry, uh, my microphone is off. Oh, we are running out of time. They are cutting my microphone. Do they really do that? Okay, sorry. So uh, let me tell you that all three parties, the OIC, the insurance companies, and the brokers, all three parties should connect our data. We don't like redundancy. We know that everybody wants to have that. We don't want to submit our data every time and we already have the numbers and statistics. We can use those numbers. We can evaluate the data. I think there are people who are willing to do that now. So please do not forget to use technology to improve your work. Kuntuk. Oh, uh, on behalf of my team, I would like to say thank you so much because I already told you a lot of stories and uh, I know that first I have to thank OIC first of all for seeing why this is important. Digital is coming. Starting from changing your, I know your name from the insurance week to InsurTech. I know that we have changed a lot. There's a big change since last year. Everything, you know, last year was online, right? If you were there, you know it. And it starts from the top. When there's a tone from the top, it comes down. I know that everybody will move when there's a tone from the top and we have already started quite some time. We already made our moves and once our consumers and the insurers and the brokers and the regulators, once we are moving at the same time, 
We believe that we will see a very big change in the near future. Thank you, Kuntuk. Doctor, please. Oh, uh, I think the most basic thing for every, I mean, the insurance business especially is trust. Trustworthiness comes from transparency in your business conduct. That goes back to his point, right? People would love to give you data if they trust in you. It actually starts here. If you cannot gain trust from the people, you cannot move on. So in order to gain trust, transparency is a must. You need to have the right behavior and then your stakeholders can use those data to leverage on their strengths and focus on how can they improve all the things. And in the end, we will get what we get is sustainability. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, our panelists and our audience as well, ladies and gentlemen, including our online audience. Thank you so much for joining us.